Look at look at Arizona. A new new head coach. Oh, let's let's get rid of this quarterback. Yeah, but you're assuming that this is gonna work. <laughs> you're assuming this is gonna work. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, he can't get on all the rides yet. <laughs> Why would you give him control of an offense? <laughs> Listen, if Darian Lake won't let him on the Predator, you shouldn't let him under center. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Jesus, that sounds the same as the last one. I love when we can cut like seven videos in a week, and I know that's hours of editing for you, but... Um, My life is being zapped away from me. Well, nice. Dirty dirty Randy in the community tab. Dirty Randy, never mind then. Dirty <laughs> You're not Randy, doing let's it? Go. All right. No, no. Thanks dirty Randy, let's go. All right, so uh, Dirty hilarious. Randy asked about, uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, um, asked about the Bills' salary cap situation and uh, what that looks like, and then are there any players you could see the Bills adding uh, this year, next year? Who would you with, want to with add? The, Yeah, with the money. The way the salary mm. cap works is it's this year's a little different, right? They're going from top 51 to top 53. As of September 4th. Right, so they're adding two players into the salary cap. For the Bills, it's not really – for most teams, it's not really that big a deal. It's going to equate to about a million dollars because once you start getting down to the bottom of the 51 to 53 – Normally, it's guys on, like, league minimum contracts, so that's, like, $400,000, so it's not really a ton. Um, so, right now, if we're just looking at the top 51, the Bills have about $21.7 million in cap space as we sit right now. Now, again, the new collective bargaining agreement is is being negotiated now. It's not impacting next season. It's not impacting this season. It's not impacting next season. It could impact the season after End that. End of 2020 is right. when it gets negotiated. Right. And the salary cap keeps going up because it's based on overall revenue, right? Yes. It's a percentage of revenue, and the bill and the NFL's revenue keeps increasing. So It was 188 last year, and it's projected to go up to 200 next year. Isn't so that we'll crazy? See. I know. It's pretty insane. It's crazy. Every year, the Bills are basically generating cap space just from being around, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's like we go back to the Mario Williams contract, right? And everybody made a big deal about the Mario Williams contract. It was a huge thing for Buffalo. But once you looked at that contract, the salary cap started exponentially increasing every year after With that. his contract. And it was basically what his contract was, yeah. right? So Mario Williams was essentially your salary cap increase. He was almost free. Right, you're playing with house money at that point. He ended up uh, the numbers with it. I'm I'm fairly certain we did this before. It ended up he ended up signing that huge deal, mm-hmm. but it ended up only being three for sixty six. Yeah, and the cap went up ten million each year. Right, so yeah. it's three for thirty six. Right, yeah, and that's anybody at that time would have signed him to that yeah. deal without, a, without a question. I know it doesn't work exactly like that, but if you had to look at it in in very simplistic terms, sure, you got thirty million from the league for doing nothing. Yeah. And you paid him 66 over three years. Right. Yeah, of course you're going to do that. So with all the cap space, what do the Bills do? Well, the good news is that the Bills can roll over as much cap space as they want, right? So they could, if they do nothing, roll $21 million into next season. Now, again, you're going to start seeing the salary cap move once we get into cuts, right? Because we're looking at top 51. So let's say the Bills cut... um, EJ but, Gaines, just as an example, right? So let's say the Bills say cut. Oh, you're going to say Demarco because he's a, he's a wash, so it makes it a lot easier. So let's hear this: you cut Demarco, two million, right? Two point one. Okay, but you have a million dollar saving, a million dollar cap hit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what that happens? What happens is that when you cut him, he gets taken out, and one of the guys that make five hundred thousand dollars moves up. Moves up, right? Yeah. So what happens is you end up saving five hundred thousand on your cap because you had that million of dead cap to pay mm-hmm. five hundred thousand for the new contract that's on. Yeah, and that's how it works. Right, exactly. So the salary cap number will likely actually their salary cap space will increase um, mm-hmm. in all likelihood yeah. once we start making. When you some make of these the cuts. bigger cuts, yeah. We named about fifteen guys that are under the fifty-one that were starters last year, or yeah. played it. It played at some capacity last year. Yeah, which I is mean, insane. Right. So, bottom fifty-one. I'll just give you. I'll just give you a rundown real quick. Isaiah McKenzie, Eddie Yarborough, Dion Lacy, Dean Marlowe, Sierra Neal, Ray Ray McLeod, Jason Kroom, uh, Levi Wallace, uh, Robert Foster. Uh, you know, it's 
I mean, and then the draftees. Right? And then and then yeah, a Wade, lot of your, Wade yeah, doesn't count against right. It. Wade doesn't count against it. Um, but uh, Dawson Knox is there. Duke Williams is there. Um, so there's a, there's a ton of players. How much in that talent 51. you have in the bottom? 51. I know, right? And they're not figuring towards salary cap. So if those players make the roster, you're going to be saving salary cap space because you're going to be losing players. Like just as an example, That's twelve guys worth about eight million dollars. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, like, if you're taking a look at the top 51, you're looking at Robert Thomas, uh, Marcus Murphy, Denzel Rice, and Lafayette Pitts. Let's say you lose those four, right? They're all making $720,000 this year. No signing bonus, no dead cap if you cut them, right? So you're going to lose those guys. You're paying the guys that are replacing them less, so you're ultimately saving money. So what do the Bills do? Well, I've been a big proponent of the Bills doing what Seattle did. And that oh. is you just roll money over forever. Just keep rolling it over. That's it. If roll it feel... and roll it and roll it because you need to pay for your draft picks. Mm. If you find that you're starting to hit on your draft picks, like Seattle got lucky because they really got fortunate with Russell Wilson because at the time yeah. they played Matt Flynn a ridiculous amount of money to be their quarterback. He was making $20 million yeah. to be their quarterback. Um, and and R- Russell Wilson won the job. Make a league minimum as a third round quarterback, yeah. right? He was the third highest quarterback on the team. Yeah, because Tavares Jackson was making more. Than yeah, that. he was the least paid quarterback on the team. And yeah, starter. Yeah, so you know you want to roll money over as much as you can because you're going to have to start looking at resigning guys. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not thinking about what players they would want to add. I'm thinking about what players you want to retain because yeah. you have Deion Dawkins coming up on a contract extension, right? You got Matt Milano coming up on a contract extension. Trey White, you got an extra year. Right, and after well, and after December thirty first this season, you can you can start negotiating with those players in their third year going into their fourth year. Mm-hmm. So after after December thirty first, you can sign Milano to an extension if you want. Yes, and you can sign Dawkins to an extension if you want, even though they've got one year remaining on their deal after this. You can sign them to extensions at that point. So, um, you know, what do you do? I, I think you got to keep the core of this team together, and that's Milano. I'm not sold on Dawkins, but that's a personal thing. I, I admit that I'm not very objective about that. No, right? no that's all right. Um, however, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of just keep rolling cash. That's it. Just yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that because you don't know what's going to happen. It seems like the, someone mentioned it in the comment section quite a bit ago. They said, listen, what you do is you get a rookie quarterback, you spend money everywhere else, mm-hmm. to try to support him. Then when it's his turn to get paid, you pay him, and then you let some of your fringe guys go because he can win you some games that those fringe guys were winning before. Right. So it seems like that's, that's the type of blueprint that they want. But as far as McDermott and Bean go, they seem very savvy with some of the, the roster things because they, they sign these guys to they save one, money. Two, yeah, they one, two year prove it deals. Like, hey, all right, if you get in here, then, you know, Hughes is the first guy that they've signed that wasn't an outsider bringing in. Mm-hmm. It's one of their own guys. Hey, listen, this is what you generated for us. We're giving you a two year extension. Right. All right. They signed, they signed Star because of experience. They brought him in, they, they brought Morse in. Mm-hmm. You know, two, two the you know three highest guy paid guys on the roster. That's who they are. You got to think down the line. Hyde and Poyer are going to get paid. Yep. Because they're making a combined ten million dollars this year as a defensive backfield, and they're probably one of the best tandems in the league. Well, the Bills haven't been shy about bringing in deep secondary guys right now either. So, you do you have- know what their secondary? If they started right now, the what the the secondary that finished the season, how mm-hmm. much they're making? I, I mean, Hyde and Poyer are the highest. Yeah, they're yeah. making ten combined. This year, yeah, I think Trey's making like two. Yeah, yeah, Trey's and Wallace anything. is making five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, you're paying less than thirteen million. Right, that's what freaking Earl Thomas is making by himself. I know, isn't it crazy? But that, but I think that bet you know it brings up a good point is um, you have to start looking at who you want to keep, but you also have to always keep having a whole train of players consistently flowing in because you're gonna have to make a commitment to Josh Allen three years from now, yes. right? So how much of a commitment are you going to make with everybody else? That's the problem that Seattle got themselves into was they started to retain players for too long, and they started paying them too much money to retain their yeah, own talent. Yeah, but at the end of their yeah, at the end of their And that's why they're in the situation money. they're in right now. But that's the reason why, and a lot of people kind of confuse what the guys get paid for what they're worth, I guess. Mm-hmm. You're going to pay a guy for what he's going to give you, not what he yeah. already gave you. Right. Like, are Hyden Poyer severely underpaid for what they contributed to his defense? No doubt. Do the Bills owe them to pay them because of what they did? No, they don't have to owe them any. Right. They don't have to owe them any. Right. Um, but you think that they would. Right. Because if they do that, then that sends a message to other players. Mm-hmm. Hey, 
if you play here and you do, they reward you if right. you if you play well here. Well, I think it's not also, everywhere's like that. I think it's also important to look at it and say the Bills didn't have to renegotiate with Jerry, but they knew that if Jerry hit the free agent market, he would you, it was gonna it was he was gonna garner more more dollar, right? Or the risk was there because they clearly think he's gonna have a good year, right? They clearly yeah. think he's gonna put up production. Yeah, year last year, agreed. So they clearly think that he's gonna produce, and he's, because he's going to produce, he's going to cost more if you let him get to the free agent market. Were they proactive in their approach, knowing that they're gonna be putting him next to Oliver? And knowing how much more he's going to get one up, mm-hmm. so if he had like, if he it's put him next gamble. to Oliver, and then he ends up having 15 sacks this year, now he can't go renegotiate with right. somebody. Else. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 risky. It's a gamble, but that's the gamble that you play. Um, and uh, you I know, think if he didn't produce last year, they wouldn't have done it. Oh, agreed. Yeah, no, 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 agreed. A hundred percent. They would have waited like Shaq. Yep. Let him wait it out. Yeah, there's pay no, him three million. Let him go. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm I, I agree with you 100. percent so it's a it's a fascinating game, but the one thing I will tell you is if Bills if the Bills start signing players to like six year extensions, that's a big red flag to me, right? Because those long contracts scare me a little bit. Right? If it's anyone but Allen, are you okay with it? If they sign. Or do you are you worried about it? No, I'd still be worried about it. For Allen? You mean? Well, I mean, unfortunately, the NFL is starting to get into those ridiculous length extension for quarterbacks. So, I mean, you look at the free agent market and guys are getting six, seven, eight-year guaranteed deals. Like, that's crazy to me. But for for Allen, I would understand. But, you know, once you start getting into defensive ends, cornerbacks, mm. mm-hmm. that's where we start getting weird. The Trey extension is going to be the one that I'm watching the most because that was their first real premier investment in a draft pick, right? That was a premier asset. So I'm very curious to see what they're looking at from a length standpoint and a dollar standpoint with him. I think if you because, were able to... Well, quarterbacks have been proven to be so interchangeable in the system, but are they interchangeable yeah. because Trey's so locked down? You know, I, well, it's an interesting it's an interesting argument to make. My argument, what I would do is I would I would I would I would go to see what Norman signed for mm-hmm. when he left Carolina and went yeah. to Washington. Yeah. And then prorate that over how many years ago it was mm-hmm. to when Trey's going to obviously have to sign his. That's what you're going to need to keep him. Because McDermott having experience with losing a number one corner in his defense, the one that yeah. brought him to the Super Bowl, and then the next year he drafted a bunch of them, and, and was it was a, a train wreck. Yeah, it was a disaster. Julio Jones goes goes for 300 on your yeah. secondary. Yeah. Uh, he knows already how well, important Trey is. It's not is. like they didn't draft good players. Bradbury's no, a hell of a quarterback. No, now he is, but right, at but not the time, yeah, not he needed that cover. Kind of like... Uh, kind of like how Wallace had White this year mm-hmm. as a cover. If Wallace was a number one by himself, I don't think he would have graded as well as he well, did. Don't you think it's fascinating? Because go ahead, name me the safeties for that Carolina defense when they got torched his last season. Can you? You can't, right? What's well, one of the first things that McDermott did when he got here? Got both of the got safeties. Got both of the safeties. He's like, okay, listen, we got some problems in so the secondary. So you're saying the safety play makes the cornerbacks interchangeable? Yeah. I think it's. I think there's. I think so there's, that CB2 can be anybody? I think there's a conversation that could be had about that. Uh, I keep trying to, I keep trying to trap you. You keep getting out of the corner. Yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna. I know because this is trying to corner him. This whole other episode, he's punching his way out. This whole other episode for a whole other time. <laughs> but if I'm Buffalo and I'm looking at Trey White, I'm trying to get him to an extension before Lattimore gets to an extension. I have to beat Lattimore Excellent. to the table. Yeah, I have to beat Lattimore. Well, to the he's table. the he was the fourth one. Who are the other ones? Uh, Eli Apple, he's been yeah, he's been dealt, so that's that's one gone. Um, Weren't there three Kevin, Ohio was State guys? Kevin, wasn't Lattimore Ohio State? Kevin King was he? Was, wow. So yeah, Lattimore. I would go four for sixty. As if you tell ask me right now, for White, four for sixty. Well, and again, the Bills aren't in a position where they have to sign White to an extension because he's got the fifth year option, no, no. and it would behoove them to give him the fifth-year option, but it would also behoove them to base the rest of his deal around that fifth-year option. Just buy the fifth-year option out. Just work Barring it into injury, the deal. You're have to pay him. Yeah, work it into the deal. Give him some new cash. But if you're going to look at what his salary should be, what that fifth-year option is going to be about 11, it's about $12 million a season. I mean, that's... But that's you got to realize you're signing Allen the, the next year. So whatever money you give him, you got to make sure that you're not giving him Allen's money. Right. It, it's risky. It's risky business. And or Edmonds. Talking about this. Yep. Right. That's the only that's the only disadvantage of having multiple first round picks in one year. If they pan out, you got to make a decision. Big difference, though. Remember the fifth year the fifth year option for Allen versus Edmonds is significantly different. It's not even not even close. Top ten versus yes, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So the money is going to be very very different. So it's going to buy them a year. But. Honestly, if they were drafted in reverse spots, it would probably be similar. 
Yeah. The fifth-year option. Yeah, it would be. A yeah, linebacker that, in the top ten versus a quarterback out of the top ten? Yeah, quarterback money Versus is, what actually did happen? Yeah, quarterback money's crazy. He's going crazy money. By that time, if they had to do a fifth-year option for Allen, you got to think it's got to be $30 million by that. Yeah, it if might it be. it keeps growing the way it is. Yeah, it might be. <sighs> Extend him now. It's, no, my point is this. No, no, I... My question is this: you can't. If you he can't extend him if down. he doesn't have a winning season prior to his extension, are we looking for another quarterback in five years? Allen. If he doesn't have a winning season, if he goes seven and nine, seven and nine, six and ten. I mean, you're looking for a new head coach, and you're looking for a new GM, and then new head coach usually, and GM always bring in their own quarterback. So that's sort of a self fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? It always happens. <laughs> it's just a self fulfilling prophecy, man. Look at. Look-